there to the next speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I am extremely honored to be taking the floor on behalf of my country, the Central African Republic, which is, of course, on its quest for peace. And I would like to seize this opportunity to thank the Santa Chidio community which invited us to present the Central African Republic situation. For those of you who do not know the Central African Republic, here's a map that isn't quite centered on the slide yet or on the screen. It is located right at the heart of Africa. And uh, it is not only part of Africa, but part of the world. So means that Central African Republic should not be forgotten by its peers. So this is, again, a little too big for the screen, but you can have an idea of the size of the country with a density of population of a maximum of five inhabitants per square kilometer. So an extremely rich nature still with Chad at its northern borders. On the eastern border, we've got both Sudans and south of uh, Central Africa are the two Congos. And then on the western border, we have Cameroon. Now, I would like to specify that the different populations along those border lines all live in perfect harmony. They have uh, natural connections, ties, linguistic, economic ties, as well as family ties. But unfortunately, what missed cruelly was the presence or the authority of a state in order to arbitrate and regulate the various populations migrating movements. And that is what triggered in the Central African Republic uh, a series of violent cycles and state coups instead of a harmonious life. So this country experienced about 15 uh, state putsch six of which were successful. The last one goes back to the 24th of March, 2013, and it caused huge destructions in terms of human casualties, public and private um, wealth, and that certainly generated a huge cleavage or a break even between the communities at the national level, which is a premiere. So it is in this sort of general turbulent context that Mrs. Catherine Samba Panza was then elected by the transitional parliament on the 20th of January 2014 in order to conduct this transition period and organize some legislative and presidential elections so as to enable our country to stand back on its legal and constitutional feet uh, lost since the 24th of March of the previous year. So here is our president who was awarded the uh, United Nations Women's Flame of Peace, um, meaning that her mission is really to bring peace back to Central African Republic, which she won't be able to do on her own, but only with the help of the local communities and populations. So she's uh, received the support of um, the United Nations uh, Women Sisters community, but this will only be possible if we take into account the real needs of the populations on the ground. Our country needs more discipline. There hasn't been a major war. There just has been a series of chaotic unruly 
demonstrations of the lack of discipline, lack of discipline in schools and communities and the administration and even among the armed forces. So that is what it's all about today, basically, to bring discipline back into all of these structures so as to make sure that the armed forces can protect the populations and the territorial integrity better and more efficiently. And to that avail, the population itself needs to mobilize itself because we have a series of external forces by next week already on the 15th of, Sep on the 15th of September, for example, we'll be welcoming some uh, United Nations uh, forces and there was already the CAC um, forces that were then strengthened and compounded even by the European Union's forces and by the 15th of September, as I said, we're expecting some more elements of the United Nations. But all of these uh, efforts will only work if the local civilian populations understand the importance and the relevance of these actions and make sure that this is a worthwhile, peaceful goal that they should join in, basically, for the good and the development of the country. So in Central African Republic, there is no such thing as an interreligious conflict, but just a great level of disorder and chaos that settled in for a long time. And in all the interventions I listened since yesterday, I think we agree uh, in as much as religion should never be a cause of conflict, but only a source of federation and of peace. So that is why I believe my presence here among my brothers and sisters will hopefully give another um, end and another motivation at the end of the tunnel for our situation, thanks to Sandra Chidio's platform, to make sure that we can better understand each other and move forward. Um, let me finish and conclude by quoting the example of our first visit to Rome in the Santo Gidio community. There was a governmental delegation, a parliamentary delegation, and a civil society delegation as well as a women's association delegation. When we left our country, we were looking at each other with a certain level of uh, mistrust, wondering what uh, whatever who was going to say or take side for. Even on the airplane, we weren't really mingling willingness potentially. And then we arrived in Rome at Santa Cidio, so everybody came along with their own fixed ideas and obsessions. And then suddenly after the first round table, I think there was Father Angela who was presiding and chairing the meeting. After this first round table, uh, during which everybody posed their own claims and accusations and uh, uh, pointing to um, this or that guilty party. Um, we then were able to watch a documentary on the Santa Gidio's work realized in Mozambique. And that was speaking for itself, for all of us, I think. In the second round table, after watching this documentary, uh, the father insisted on the fact that we should really focus on what unites us rather than what divides us. And that is how I think during the second round table, we all had understood that the only thing we were, um, we should be federating around with the Central African Republic, our country and nothing else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Lea, for your uh, speech. Thank you for seeking peace in your country. And thank you for believing, as we do, in looking for what unifies us. And this is one of the principles of uh, St. Uh, John 23rd. So, all of you spoke about 10 minutes, so I'm very happy. <coughs> and we are perfectly on time. I will now give you the floor. 